Všechny zahraniční elektrárny, které jsme vám až do posud ukázali, by se čistě teoreticky mohly objevit i u nás, v České republice, i když některé tedy s notnou dávkou představivosti. To, co vám ale ukážeme nyní, jsem si jistý, že se u nás nikdy neobjeví. Právě teď se nacházíme nedaleko dánského pobřeží a tato větrná farma nese název Horns RF2, kdysi byla úplně největší na světě. Vítejte v dalším díle energetické reality show Česko hledá elektrárnu. Větrníky na moři neboli offshory. Řeklo by se jeden z nejprogresivnějších trendů moderní energetiky. Jenomže čísla říkají něco jiného. Na celém světě tvoří offshory pouze 7% instalované kapacity všech větrných elektráren. Naprostá většina instalací stojí na pevněně. A ani výhled do budoucna nenaznačuje, že by se na tomto poměru mělo něco měnit. Na druhou stranu vrtule daleko na moři mají nespochybnitelné výhody. Většinou nikomu nevadí a díky příznivějším klimatickým podmínkám nabízejí vyšší využití instalovaného výkonu než vrtule na pevnině. Malé srovnání. Zatímco v Severní moři dosahuje koeficient ročního využití větrných elektráren 50%, v Česku je to jen něco málo přes 10%. I think it's um, pretty nice because then it's not on land and um, there are a lot more wind out on the ocean so it's a lot stronger and I don't think they stand as much still as they do it like inland so they provide more like energy. They have to be on the water not on uh, on the land. We are living um, about uh, one kilometer from the four biggest um, wind what do you call it? wind uh, yeah and uh, it's noisy and uh, it's uh, it's not good for for your sleep okay. because uh, it goes up in in the houses i think it's good it's very positive it's giving green energy and uh, it's helping with all the pollution in the air so yeah. i would say it's very positive i think it's a good idea uh, because the uh, wind turbines is, is good for the uh, our environment and um, and in, in the North Sea there is a, a lot of wind so I think both are needed. Building on land is often less expensive. However, in many countries there is not enough space on land. And if you build at sea you can get larger units and maybe produce more renewable energy. Teď mám pro vás pár zcela fascinujících čísel. Větrná farma, která je za mnou, má celkem 91 větrníků. Každý má instalovaný výkon 2,3 MW. Dohromady tedy mají sílu 209 MW. Pak je tu jedna ještě starší farma a jedna novější. Já vás nebudu dlouze napínat a rovnou vám prozradím, že celkem je tady 220 větrných elektráren o celkové síle 775 Megawattu, což už odpovídá jedné velké uhelné elektrárně. Tedy skoro. When you look out the window, you can see it's uh, quite stupid to build a wind turbine farm here. But uh, normally it's blowing a lot in the spring and in the autumn and the winter time of course. So that's why we work here from March till uh, October by making maintenance on the turbine to be sure they can run with no problem until next spring. A tohle to je gondola, i když asi ne úplně ta, na kterou jste zvyklí z Benátek. Je to srdce každého větrníku a obsahuje úplně veškerou technologii, od hlavní řídele až po generátor. A to všechno samozřejmě potřebuje pravidelnou údržbu. A podle mě teda je to práce snů. It's 
doing a service on a car. Pretty much the same thing. There's something you have to uh, put in some grease and uh, tension some bolts and different stuff. And uh, we visit uh, the turbine once a year. And the other time of the year we do the troubleshooting. So if one breaks down or it's uh, low on oil or something, we go back to the turbine and fill it up so it can run and uh, make some money. We have a maximum limit for the wind. And uh, if we go over that, uh, the turbine will shut down automatic. And that's uh, because the pressure on the turbine will be so high, so it maybe can damage the turbine more. The most effective wind, I think, is about 12 meters, about, and then it runs the best way and make the most power. You start like a fisherman, so what's the difference between be fisherman here and sail this boat? Uh, but the, the difference is we have not so many days at, at sea when we are operate with turbines because there are some with, with the weather um, and it's it's not so many rules. Yeah, that's the difference. And you are more home. I have done it in. Uh, for 40 years. It's a pleasure. Tato větrná farma je také unikátní tím, že ji hlídá Poseidon, tedy ne úplně ten pán s trojzubcem, ale i když kdo ví, ale servisní tým, který je v ubytovací platformě. A ta byla také rovněž první svého druhu. Tak se pojďme podívat na to, jak to tady mají zařízené. It's, it's the best thing. <laughs> I like it very much to be here. And it's, it's very nice because it paying, uh, normally when we are going from ashore and out here, it takes one and a half hour to come here. Mm -hmm. And then here it takes only uh, less than half an hour mm -hmm. than people are on the turbine now. So we save uh, two, two and a half hour every day on each person. With this vessel, we go uh, we go out every uh, Tuesday and back on the Monday. So we stay out here for a week, where we uh, uh, do the work on the turbine, and then we uh, live on the platform. And then uh, Monday evening, we go back to harbor, and we go back home, and we are off for a week, and we go back out. That's uh, half the year of the summer. In the summertime, in the winter time, it's a little more less because we have more wind, we have higher waves and things so we can't go out here because of the safety. Jak už to tak v energetice bývá, všechno dobré je i pro něco špatné. A světe div se. O negativních dopadech na životní prostředí se hovoří i v případě offshore větrníků. Sluší se však dodat, že rizika jsou při nejmenším diskutabilní. I believe they are good because they can provide the energy. Uh, but uh, for the good part we don't know the full story of them. For example, how many resources were used to make them or how much they affect the sea life at the bottom. Definitely for like the sea creatures, I mean, I, I just think they swim like past it. I don't think they really notice it really. Um, and I'm not sure about the birds because they're like uh, more like around the beaches. Uh, where they catch fish and stuff. So I don't think they're that bothered by it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, it can have it, but that's why we have envir environmental engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do uh, studies before we basically install uh, wind turbines. So uh, on paper, it should be right. Of course, the fish and the sea life can be affected and also the birds and stuff. But I think that in the end, it's more positive than negative. The only thing we do is that we place the, the turbine in the sea and we typically hammer a monopile in the sea bottom. The monopile is a steel tube and it doesn't interfere with the fish or the animal life down there. On the contrary, around these monopiles we place a layer of stone typically and these stone areas gives a lot of potential for breathing for small animals, uh, microbes, microbes I think they're called, to, to live and to breathe and they only uh, then also um, give some uh, shelter for the fish 
because the fishermen can't uh, fish close to the turbines and they can't use trawl, also things that are uh, carrying uh, or touching the ground because, because of our cables. They are not allowed to fish with something that touches the ground. One thing is that the wind farm needs to be located in a suitable area. It should avoid areas that are important for sensitive species, for example. And it's also important that the wind farm is operated in a responsible way using good techniques. But if this is followed, there is often low risk of damage during the operation of a wind farm at sea. The problem is that humans need all these activities. We need fish, we need electricity, transportation and so on. Uh, however, all of these activities have a responsibility to carry out their work in an environmentally responsible way. It's okay, but it's uh, changing our climate, I think. You're taking the, the power from the earth mm -hmm. and using it to something else. Mm -hmm. But the earth needs the power, mm -hmm. the energy you take from the wind and you move it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. If you have a lot of uh, wind turbines uh, concentrated. concentrated together, it can affect the current on where it comes from and how much it's going to exit on the opposite mm -hmm. side. Uh, and uh, sometimes this can affect the different air masses, especially if it's colder and uh, the, it will have bigger impact on close-up areas in terms of the storms. There's no evidence of that. Uh, you can say that offshore wind turbines substitute fossil fuels which are emitting CO2 as a carbon dioxide. And that's the main problem for the climate. And we have to combat that pr issue, that problem with the uh, CO2 emission. And offshore wind is a very good and cost-effective way to do that. We need also to add uh, the, the life cycle, so to take it from cradle to grave and think also for how we're going to recycle it, mm -hmm. uh, because we know that they are made of uh, uh, polyplasters, uh, which are uh, not very easy to be recycled, so maybe to think about this as well. I think as it is now, we, we can't uh, recycle uh, the plates, mm -hmm. not yet. They are working very hard on it. Na budování offshore větrné energetiky se poslední dobou znáší ještě jeden otazník – ekonomika. Kvůli vyšším nákladům na výstavbu a financování projektů, tak takřka po celém světě odpadá zájem o takzvané aukce, tedy soutěže na budování větrných farem v konkrétních lokalitách. Politické a investiční vize však bez ohledu na to zůstávají ambiciozní. Last year the prime minister of the countries around the North Sea uh, gathered here in Ispia and made the Ispia declaration. Uh, they uh, made a plan saying that by 2050 the North Sea would produce or have a capacity of 150 gigawatts of offshore wind. So you have to take into account where is the turbine placed. Uh, offshore you have a potential of finding places uh, like in the North Sea with a very high average wind speed and that makes bring down the cost of energy. Onshore is also uh, an option Erste is following, uh, and uh, onshore could also be relevant, but the problem is that the number of places where you can put on, uh, turbines onshore is limited. Uh, there are a lot of people living in Europe, uh, a very dense population, uh, a lot of places. So there's some challenges, and offshore have alternative uh, options, uh, and it will be a mix in the future of, of onshore and offshore, uh, solar and other technologies, uh, for sure. So they are not competing each other, they are working together. Z tohoto dílu jsme měli opravdu vítr. Až do posledního okamžiku jsme netušili, zda nám počasí umožní vůbec natáčet. Nakonec jsme ale měli štěstí a tak opět můžeme diskutovat. Jaký je potenciál offshore větrníků v rámci evropské energetiky a také ekonomiky? A kolik se jich vůbec vejde do Severního moře? Zajímá nás právě váš názor. Dejte nám ho vědět a my se vám brzy ozveme z další zajímavé zahraniční lokality.